Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have news and it is an amazing one coming from the guys at Autodesk. And so Autodesk has gone ahead to release 3D Studio Max 2020.2. This version actually comes with three main updates. Actually, there's a couple of other updates that are just racked around it, but we're going to talk about the three major ones that they've made public. And then we're going to just talk about maybe the pros and cons of all those things. And starting with the first one, which has to do with the new SketchUp import update. There is now an update that goes ahead to support, you know, you being able to import SketchUp all the way to version 2014. So in the previous version, you could actually just go ahead and import SketchUp to a certain version. But now, of course, you can go through download you know work with sketchup get your files out of sketchup into 3d studio max so it doesn't matter if you're working with 2014 2015 2016 2017 and also they've also said that the new sketchup importer is based on the autodesk translation framework which is called atf and this is definitely one of the best improvements that they've done when it comes to you being able to import SketchUp. Like you can see from the screen, the performance is totally, totally different. Next up is the chamfer. So we already know that the guys from 3D Studio Max, the guys in Autodesk, they've been working tirelessly to actually make chamfer or the chamfer modifier that exists in 3D Studio Max way, way cleaner, way better. And I think about this point, 3D Studio Max has way more metering when it comes to the kinds or the types of chamfers that you can get compared to so many other apps and yes of course they've also gone ahead to actually add two new corner metering when it gets to do with chamfer so there is one called the patch and another one which is called radia and these chamfers actually provide high resolution quadratal intersections when it gets to do with you being able to you know create chamfers and other stuffs that you would like to get especially if you're making all those nice curved you know smooth surfaces in your model whether you're doing hard surface or you know just basic stuff Yes, of course, you now have the option for you to be able to play with these things as much as you want. Another new feature that has been added to the chamfer is that there is now a new Vertis chamfer implementation that has been added to this. So just in case you have certain sets that you want to actually keep as a segment and you want to use them maybe for some other things later, you don't want them to affect certain things or you just want to save sets or you just want to save set selections. Of course, now you can have Vertis sets that you have saved and you can also use them for that. Now, there are also several new changes that has also been made available that has to do with poly editing. Now, in the editable poly, you know the section where you go and, you know, do your chamfer? There is now a couple of things that you can find there. A couple of options now include uniform chamfer, end bias, radial bias, tension, and also depth. So just in case you want to, you know, play with chamfer when you're working with the editable poly, of course, of course, there is now a whole lot of things that you can play with. Next up is the viewport, you know, the viewport thingy. These guys have actually done something really nice. I mean, it's appealing to me right now that I can go into 3D Studio Max and actually throw in a HDRI and see what it looks like directly in the viewport. So now you can be able to actually see what your HDRI looks like, what the refraction, what the roughness looks like directly on your viewport. And as well, if you want to go ahead and make use of active shade, oh, good and fine, you can also do that. Now, other changes is for you to also be able to display certain, you know, physical materials directly in the viewport. I think for me, this is good. There is also an improvement for shadows. There is also improvement when it gets to do with, you know, depth of field and some other stuff that you would definitely love to see once you start working with you know 3d studio max following the roadmap which they delivered the other time i guess these guys are just working on a very slow pace but at the same time they are definitely coming up with something and there's also a couple of you know improvements these guys are not talking about things that has to do with you know animation performance although they actually talked about the animation performance not so long ago i mean when they released the i think 2020 or 2019.1 yeah, they did talk about something like that and I also think that there is some sort of improvements within the track view, maybe the state UI, something like that. But for sure now, I don't really, really know because I have not laid my hands on this. And hopefully we're going to get our hands on these and we're going to do a simple walkthrough of all of these features that they've showed up. Link to the release notes and everything you need to know about this will be in the description just in case you want to go ahead and read this thing out. And that's going to be about it, guys. I'd like to know what your thoughts about this is in the comment section. Do you like 3 d 
Serial Max? Do you work with 3D Serial Max? I mean, do you think these guys are actually getting up to speed just because 2.8 Blender is available and everybody's shitting the pants? I would like to know what your thoughts about this is in the comment section. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to turn on notifications. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing if you can hit subscribe button and also turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video, the next episode, the next update. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.